We have students from Vietnam, China, Bosnia. We have students from Mexico, Muslim, Serb, and Croatian. About 30% of our students are foreign born. More than half are refugee children, refugees from war. The remainder have come from another country, but were immigrants rather than refugees. The younger ones that are coming in that speak little or no English because they only speak one language at home, it's, it's vital for them in order to be able to function properly in society and in school. A need for the ETP will be there as long as we continue to have immigrants and refugees coming to St. Louis. And we seem to be a wonderful place to be, St. Louis, and people keep coming and coming and coming. And I, I would think as long as people are coming, we would need this program. When I first came to Notre Dame Elementary School in 1997, I came in with some very definite ideas of how I wanted to structure the school and run the school. It was also the same year that we had a mass immigration of students coming to us from Mexico. And I learned very, very quickly that it could not be business as usual. We could not approach the education of our children in the same manner of a traditional school. And what Notre Dame had to do was we realized we had to change the way we were doing business. Starting five or six years ago, we had started going to meetings to see what we could do to help our students who had problems with English language, our immigrant students. Muy importante. Los cuerpos de baño, se locación en la espalda, aprende? Please raise your hand if you know exactly, verbatim, what I just told you. Now, pretend you are nine years old and you are sitting in a third grade classroom. How are you feeling right now? Lost, overwhelmed. I know that we are one of five schools that do have the tutoring program here. Talking to other principals in this area, there's, I think, a growing need. You know, some of them who had very few students who were immigrants at their school now are starting to see what we probably saw seven, eight years ago. Well, when we began, we had no idea we were going to develop an English tutoring project. About the end of 1997, the Leadership Conference of Women Religious, that would be the elected leadership of the congregations that live and minister in the St. Louis area, said, is there something we could do to help education in the city of St. Louis? Is there something that within our resources we could begin, something that's not being offered now? And uh, I landed as one of three members on a committee to uh, ask around to find out what is what's really needed that's not being done. And we went down many blind alleys. Uh, and finally, we found ourselves hearing from so many people, if you really want to help a group that needs help, that's not getting it, please do something for the, for the immigrant community. The South City is ha getting so many new arrivals, and we're not prepared for it. In the fall of 98, is when the project was implemented in those in four of the schools, St. Pius V, St. Cecilia's, Notre Dame Elementary, and Resurrection. We started with two full-time tutors, and the services are delivered by means of a mobile classroom, which makes it possible to, first of all, get all the materials in a easy fashion from school to school, rather than having to duplicate and it solved the problem uh, in case schools didn't really have a space. The simplicity of the program, it's simply devised. I mean, you have three tutors who come to a school, they, they're certified, they know what they're doing, 
they talk with the teachers and the principal to find out what needs they see that these students have. You come, you meet with the student, you meet with the teachers, and you start working with them, and you go on to the next school. One of the other things that I think is really significant about this program is that it is held at so many different sites. The fact that these sisters can go to each of these sites and individualize the instruction for those students is essential and that the van that they work in, so many schools are cramped for space and that that van, or actually I think there are two vans, are just essential to the, to the program. The kids love going out there because it's something different and it's interesting to be there. What does that look like? Juice. Orange juice. Can you find the orange juice, Anita? Right here. Okay. Number 10. Each of us is in between four and five schools every day. About eight o'clock in the morning is our first school. Now these schools are all in pretty close proximity, so the travel time is minimal. We've tried to be as accommodating as possible with the schedule so that we're really taking students out of a class at a time that that classroom teacher feels is a good time. The need that we were seeing was we had students who would come into kindergarten who spoke absolutely no English and were in families where there wasn't any English being spoken. Do you have one of those at your house? Do you know what this is? you know what it opens? By the opens. middle of kindergarten, the kids had done pretty well with picking up a lot of the language, but their reading skills were so far behind. There was nobody at home to help them with any of the writing skills or reading wild. stories to them. An ugly little frog was looking up at her. The frog asked again. Well, what's the matter, princess? Oh, it's you, you old water splasher, the princess said. My golden ball has fallen into the well. That is why I am crying. Stop crying, said the frog. Maybe I can help you. You know, just having a class with 20 students, the teachers can't always meet individually with the students. So the English tutors coming in were able to give that little bit of extra help that most of our kids are getting from mom and dad at home. You take the word them. The teacher is talking to, to them. The teacher is talking to them. Okay, which one of those pronouns can you use instead of girls? She. That would be if there was one girl, she is playing. What if there's more than one girl? The teachers are the ones who recommend the, the children to us, what children in their classrooms need you? services. Fine, thank you. I mean, it's obvious when somebody just comes uh, from another country that they need it, but some of the other students, they've been here for a while and it might sound like they're speaking the language and understanding, but the, voca the academic vocabulary is causing them problems. Uh, they say it takes eight or nine years for someone to really learn English enough to be able to progress in a classroom. So a teacher is the best one to pick that up who needs it. Yeah, what, you remember what address is? Yeah. Okay, you live on the street, you live on... <laughs> Broadway. Broadway. And what's yeah. the number? What's the number? You need three more numbers. You write the number. Okay. Yeah, what is that? Four. Three. What oh, number? Oh, three. Two. Oh, no, that's telephone. That's different. I Let me show you. Here. Come here. Let so me show you the address. I'm the address. I will show you. The children, some of them end up sitting on a fence. They've got a culture that they're growing up in, in their home, and they've come to a new place. And to help them out in such a way that they can succeed academically, socially, survival skills, etc., we feel that our program is helping them to better adjust to this new culture that they're in. 
Well, at first I was scared because they told me we were coming to the U.S. and I was, I was excited, but then a bit, a bit scared and I kind of angry because I thought I left everything behind and I came to this and I can't even speak English. I started like to reading some books. Like we used to get some books, and since there were like more people, so each one would try to do read a paragraph. Lots of money. Now, when they hit, write a word like that, what does that mean? Remember when they put so it? So it was nice because if we got yes. stuck, Sister Marilyn would explain it to us or tell us the word. And that's how I started to reading, and it got easier for me to do my homework because then I could understand it and I could read it. Ordinarily, when a family comes to the city, the father learns English pretty much with work or maybe through some fast lessons, but learns pretty much by working. There was a program for women in their homes, but the children, what was really offered was not enough to take care of this big influx. Salary is what? It's a regular payment from a business for the work you do. All right. What's the next word? Time card. Time card. See if you can find that. Time card. When I first heard about the project that was starting up, I said, well, I don't speak any other language fluently, at least not to the extent that I felt I could work with students who didn't understand English. The reality is because we work with students from 10, it's average between 10 and 13 different countries each year, we would, no one would know all those languages anyway. And these are the schools that really don't have the funds to uh, provide extra English tutoring. The English Tutoring Project gives immigrant kids who really represent a large portion of the high school dropout rate gives them that extra edge they need very early in their lives. If we can take these kids who need these services the most, do the intervention and create the change at the elementary school level, they're going to leave us prepared for high school, they're going to enter high school, be successful, and then they will be graduates before they enter the workforce and they will be prepared. So the English Tutoring Project is critical. You may not see the results short term, but in the long term, it is an essential component to creating systemic change for these families. If we are going to break the cycle of poverty for marginalized families, education is key. The English Tutoring Project is very specific and very necessary to that process. <laughs>